Hey guys, so I have no front door on my house. Uh, so when people come to make deliveries or guests come, they often get confused about where they're supposed to go. They knock on the garage door or they give me a phone call from the front yard. So I have a doorbell here that I installed, but it's not obvious because next to a garage door, you know, that it's the doorbell. So what I want to do is make a little sign that hangs here that says, ring the doorbell. So, you know, people know that this is a doorbell and that's how they get our attention. So I just need to uh, measure, figure out uh, what size I want. And, you know, I don't want it to come up too big and, and interfere with the address. Uh, so, you know, it has to be large enough to see, but not so big that it, you know, interferes with the address sign. So I'm thinking about eight inches by about 12 inches. It doesn't have to be really big. And then I can drill a hole in here and just hang it. A little ceramic plaque that says, ring the bell. All right, so today I'm gonna make that plaque out of some wild clay and some natural pigments. We'll see how it goes. So because my measurements can afford to be imprecise, I don't need to calculate the shrinkage exactly, but I need to understand that it is gonna shrink. So uh, 12 inches should be something more like 13 inches and eight should be probably closer to eight and a half, something like that, just to account for some shrinkage. But I'm not too worried about it uh, because I have lots of room to play with in there. Now, a lot of people will do this with a slab roller and that's great if you have one. Uh, to me, a slab roller is just an expense that I don't need to invest in because I can create slabs myself. Now, if I was creating, you know, huge slabs frequently, it would make sense. But uh, you can certainly make clay slabs by hand. Now, I've um, dusted my work surface with some powdered clay just to keep it from sticking because it will tend to do that, especially since this clay is still pretty damp. You're better off if you're using a rolling pin to try to roll in one direction and not do the back and forth thing because then it'll grab and peel up bits. And I think, I think that's pretty good, fairly even. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna go with that. Um, I can always add on bits if I need to, according to my tape measure. Um, I'm certainly right in the area, but if I have a little corner that's missing, I can always push a little piece of clay in there. So I've got my handy dandy carpenter square here, which will help me easily figure out where I have 12 by eight inches.
Okay, I'm gonna show you what I mean by filling in the corners. There's that corner. Cut that so that it fits. Press it in there. Knead this up and re-flatten it out with the palm of my hand quickly. And then if I want to go to nine inches, that's right there. So it's just a little corner. Let's see if I can just trim this off something like that and put that in there and then if I flip this around on my eight and a half mark and trim it down trim off this little bit of excess right there all right Trim this side down a little bit more. Okay. Okay. And then cut that, and there we have it. I'm gonna do a little bit of smoothing on this, not a lot, because I don't want to distort it. It's so soft at this point. But I do want to make it relatively smooth. Smooth the edges a little bit. Again, not super critical yet, but let's give it a fair start. Okay, now, can I move this or is it too damp? So here's a nice big piece of cotton cloth that I can set it on if I'm able to flip it, if and when I'm able to flip it over, I should say. I'll make sure there's relatively few wrinkles in it. All right, I got it. I got it. It's flipped onto here and now I'm gonna smooth the backside. Now the back is a little bit more problematic. One, because I set it on that powdered clay, so it picked up some of that texture. And two, because I added to it in places, so I have these little seams where bits were attached that I have to deal with. And I may even add some more clay in here in places. All right, so I've got my plaque cut out. I'm just about 13 by eight and a half square. This should be good. I'm gonna let this dry for a good hour or so, just like this. And then I'll come back. Uh, I'll see if I can kind of clean up the edges, put the holes in it, you know, that kind of thing. All right, catch up with you in a little bit. All right, this has had some time to dry up and firm up a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and carefully finish the edges and the corners make sure we don't have any rough spots on the surface and then if i can i'm going to gently try to roll it over and take a look at the other side okay just using a wet finger to just smooth out some of these rough spots and then i'm just going to gently kind of shape the edge i still want it to look a little bit rough i don't want it to be you know factory finished I want it to have a little bit of a coarseness to it, a homemade look, primitive pottery sort of feel to it. So let's try it this way. I'll pull the cloth over it, set a board on it, and then I 
think it's okay. Ta-da! Now I've got it flipped over and I can work on this side a little bit. Okay, I think we're making good progress. Uh, obviously this needs a lot more drying and I want it to be a little firmer even before I put the holes in it to hang it. So I'll let this dry for another hour or so and then we'll come back, uh, probably put the holes in it for hanging it on the wall. Um, and then maybe if it's firm enough, we can decide which side I'm gonna use for the sign. And then uh, the side I'm gonna paint on, I'm also gonna uh, do some stone smoothing on it so it has a nice texture. So um, we'll come back to that. So I let it dry for a while, I came out, I flipped it over again. I put a heavy tub of clay on top because the edges were starting to curl a little bit and I, I wanna keep it as flat as possible. So um, I think I'm ready to put some finishing touches on this slab uh, before I let it completely dry and then paint the designs on it, which will probably happen tomorrow. So I've got this three quarter inch drill bit. Um, I'm not gonna put a three quarter inch hole in it, but just the, the pilot portion, just the tip at the end, I'm gonna use to go through the, the clay and make the hole. Okay, so I marked where the holes will go. And now I'm just gonna, by hand, just turn this bit uh, just to make the little hole through it. And then when I flip it next time, I can just clean out the hole on the other side the same way. All right, it's a couple days later. So I allowed this to dry slowly, but I tried to keep something heavy on it because I didn't want it to warp too much. Now it did warp some, uh, not a lot, and certainly not enough that, you know, it's unusable. It's just a plaque that's hanging on the outside of my house. Now, if I was making tiles that I wanted to lay up in mortar, uh, I think it probably would be a little too warped. I didn't have anything that was heavy that I could put on top of it that was really gonna absorb moisture out of it. So ideally, I think I would want some sheets of drywall, top and bottom to sandwich it, and then some heavy weights on it. And that drywall, that gypsum would absorb the moisture out of the tile. Um, I didn't want to invest in a piece of drywall just for this project. So I used plywood, which wasn't as absorbent. And so then I would take the plywood off and allow it to air dry some, and then flip it over and allow it to air dry some. And you know, so it warped a little. And, and I'm okay with that, like I said. I'm just telling you, if you wanna keep yours flatter, uh, maybe something like gypsum board or something that's gonna absorb some of that moisture and then again, wait on it to keep it from warping. I mean, it's not bad, it's not bad. The other thing I've done that's a little different from the way I usually work is I've gone ahead and drawn out the words that I want in pencil. So usually when I make pottery, I freehand it. Um, that's something I enjoy doing. That's something I think the prehistoric potters did. And so I try to hone my skills in freehanding designs because I think that's what the prehistoric potters did mostly. In this case, uh, with words, which is not something I do every day, especially, uh, I did draw it in in pencil. If you're firing at a low temperature, the graphite from the pencil may not burn off like you're used to in a kiln firing. You may have to go back in after the firing and erase those pencil lines depending on how hot your fire gets. But I'm okay with that. And even if they, some of those pencil lines remain after the firing, that's not that big of a deal. Because I think at 20, 30, 50 feet out in the front of my house, oh, you're hardly gonna notice pencil lines. So all I have to do now is paint the words on, which I already have drawn on here with pencil, and then um, fire it.
right, this is just white clay that I collect up in Northern Arizona. And this is what I'm gonna paint Belle in. Okay, last color. This is some uh, red ochre and red clay mixed together, about 50-50. And that's what I'm gonna write the in. Okay, I hope you thought this was a fun project. I thought it was. A little bit different from my usual, but um, you know, something practical that people can do at home. Um, made entirely from wild clay and minerals I collected myself in the desert. Okay, so also I will fire this in an outdoor fire and hang it on my front wall. In a future video, I'll show you what it looks like after the firing hanging on the wall, but uh, for now, you know, I'm not firing it today. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap the video up and fire it in the future. All right, thanks for coming along with me today. I'll catch you next time. Uh -huh.